Good morning. Welcome. Oh, wow, it looks like it's already nine, so I can get started. If you can see, we're going to do some tulips today. I have painted this in the past and really liked it. But when I did it before, I used uh, Cad Red Light acrylic to tone the canvas. And this time I'll be using just the transparent colors that I like to start with. And and it every time I, if I paint something again, it usually turns out a little different. So I just really like this. So, good morning. To begin with, I'm going to just start laying down the transparent colors. And for the tulips, I chose a permanent rose. It's a Winter Newton transparent. And I'm going to add some liquid into it to thin it out quite a bit. Oh, such a pretty color. So this is kind of like I used to tone the canvas with Cad Red Light. This is doing it with just these base colors and it will show through a little bit. That's the idea that you hope that also show through and the color is so beautiful and vibrant in these transparent colors. I first learned this technique when I took a workshop with Dreema Toll Perry. She was a fellow daily painter. I was in a group called dailypainters.com. Uh, and that was our website. And um, she did a workshop down in North Carolina. I loved her work and did it for a while, but you know how sometimes when you try new things, you don't even know how I, how you stop sometimes, but I did. And then I was watching Kim Meyer Smith. I was like, yeah, I need to go back to that because that's what she does too. She does uh, mixing ahead of time, and I tried that a couple of times recently. One day it was more successful than others, but today I mixed up a little bit of some green ahead. Um, it's hard for me now. I'm more my personality is more on the fly, you know. And I've done it so much painting that mixing as I go feels pretty comfortable. But I wanted to try it because I think that it might help me to just try some different things, you know, if I think ahead of time. So I'm gonna keep working on that. I really am loving this color to start with. This, I think I said this is a Winsor Newton. Transparent. As you know, not all colors, uh, all, not all uh, manufacturers make the paint's the same, so like you can get a, a Lucas Sap Green and it's gonna be opaque, but if you get a, a Sap Green in some other brands, like the one I have is Rembrandt, 
and it's transparent. So one way you can look on the back and some manufacturers do like a square and if the square isn't filled in, it's transparent. If it's half filled in, it's semi-transparent and it's filled in, it's opaque. Um, I wish they would all be consistent and do the same thing, but some will just have it written somewhere on there what it is. Um, but they, they usually do something. Oh, I think it's just pretty like that. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking for the background, um, it's a pretty warm background of doing, oh, okay, bye-bye. Thanks for stopping by and thank you. Um, about the, saying about the background being kind of warm. Oh, it's going to do transparent orange oxide. And it's going to look pretty brown, but let's see if we can get it. Use a bigger brush. Um, thinned out a little bit more. There we go. Down on the table, I think I'm going to do a little bit of dioxine purple. Dioxine. That's another word that hangs me up. I had a time of it today trying to decide what to paint. Well, starting yesterday, I just... Um, I was going to do a bird, and then I was going to do a, a mouse, and a rooster, and this morning I ended up with tulips, and it just felt right. Um, I was sick last week, and I was sick like a couple weeks before that, and I think it's just like threw me off a little bit. You just can't kind of get out of a, um, I'm trying to say like I was kind of in a roll on a roll in a way and then suddenly things came to a grinding halt and now I'm trying to get it going again. I'm contemplating doing a 30 paintings in April. Um, I, like I said, I was a daily painter, so I've done daily paintings a lot, but I haven't for the past couple of years, but I just feel like maybe I need something to really get me going stronger, because that used to really keep things flowing. Prime the pump, as they say. All right, uh, so now for that dioxazine purple, which... It's going to be kind of strong here, but we'll see. That's what I'm feeling. I thought I had done an extra coat of gesso to make this flow a little better, but I'm not sure if I did.
So now I'm going to switch to some Viridian green first and then some sap green. The viridian is very cool in temperature. Yeah, I stuck my brush in the opaque. It actually looks pretty warm, but I'm just I'm going to use both, I think. Cool and warm in here. Just cause. Because at this point, we just want to get some color down. All right, so I'm going to put some sap green down as well. everywhere so I, I see some places that I need to fill in so I'm going to get it back in here and the Inside here, I'm going to put a little bit of um, red, transparent red medium. Some of this, what I'm doing, I just like all these colors, so. And then I have a little bit of transparent yellow, Indian yellow out that I'm going to also use. And that's going to go here. Anywhere else, I think. Anywhere else I see a little bit of yellow. A little bit of warmth.
Okay. Oh, I I'm gonna put a little right here. Oops. All right, so I think that's gonna be it for the transparent layers. Layer. Good morning, Barbara. So for the opaque color, I, I'm gonna mix a little bit of uh, the permanent rose and some warm white. can see that's still some places it looks good. It's a little bright. So I'm gonna make a decision here. I have some Montserrat orange I could add in. I'm gonna do that first. That looks that looks good for at least this first layer. Okay, that's not quite light enough for that, but it is good for here. So I'll just need to go lighter on that. So I'm gonna mix some more of that with warm white. Maserat orange. Make another pile that's a little lighter. And I'm going to try some Naples yellow in that pile to warm that up a little bit. So this is the lighter mixture that I just did. And I'll, probably, and I'll have to, when I get to the lightest light, that'll go over some of this too. So I'll get some of this opaque color on. Pretty cold here in Chesapeake, Virginia. I know it's. My sister lives up in Massachusetts and they lost electricity yesterday. But the snow they got. Such crazy weather. We're supposed to have 73 on Friday. Okay, with this, you know, I usually start with darks. <laughs> so don't ask me why I jumped right in here with lighter colors today, but I did. I 
Nico. Switch over to the dark blend though. And I'm gonna use some of the permanent rose. to accentuate some of the dark here. For the darker value, there's darker darks here underneath everything. Uh, this kind of gives me a road map to find more details now. Wow, you can hear the wind out there. Now my dog's barking because of the wind. a funny little dog. She doesn't bark very much at all, but that sometimes she barks at stuff that's not not the things that you would expect her to bark at. There's a sh I watch a lot of um, oh jeez, now she's really getting going. Uh, I watch a lot of British television uh, uh, bit box and they always have like the canned sounds in the background and fox screaming and that really wigs her out she just can't stop barking when she hears that fox on tv i had no idea that it was a fox so one time somebody said that that's what it was um it's kind of an eerie sound they make So in this case, I am using transparency again to do this dark. Um, and back to some of that transparent orange oxide right in here. I don't know why I didn't get that. some of this light color that I did on this table. It actually does what I hoped it would do. This is when it would have helped if I mixed it up more.
So I'm going to go to the background. I had mixed a little bit of color up there with the transparent oxide brown, some of the Maserat orange. anything else in there. Okay, we'll see how that looks. Switch to my bigger brush. And I think I want to add in some uh, Naples yellow as I go down. Morning, Michael. I find that when I get some opaque on the background, it starts to feel more solid. So I like to do that pretty early on. I was going to try to do something different than what was there, but I actually kind of like sort of this soft pink on pink. I don't like the edges either. It makes it more finished if I do that. Okay, so I'm going to work on some of the greens. When I mix some greens up, um, I used a little bit of sap green. Lemon yellow, <clears throat> excuse me, and some alizarin to calm it down a little bit because it was too saturated. Actually, still looks too saturated. Let's see. I'm going to mix some more up with the Viridian combination too. Let's see if I like that there. Then I'm adding just a little bit of warm white because this in the front looks uh like it could have some white in it. And a little bit more of the red. a little bit bluer. Okay. 
It won't be exact, but I like this better. better than it. It'll still need more a little more detail but I think that what it needs now is um oh you know what I missed that whole area there. Let me do that first. shadow a little bit. It's got the purple, but I think it needs some blue in it too. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing in here is add some blue to that purple. Darken that a little bit. Yeah, we want to get those leaves going underneath the tulip. Get the values correct, the right relative dark to light going on here. Get some dark going in here. All right, this one comes out that way, so its shape isn't quite right. I had a birthday last week and um, asked for a gift certificate to Rosemary and Company in England to get some brushes. I've never had uh, any of their brushes before and I'm so excited. I have some things in my cart and hopefully I'll get that order sent off today. It takes a while. It's so far, 
unless you pay a lot extra. Of course, once I order, I'm going to order it like tomorrow, but I don't, think, I don't know that I'll pay that much extra. <laughs> Every person that I've ever heard talk about and raves, how well made they are and how much they love them. And I don't, I don't know why, because when I look at the price is not that much more than what I paid, you know, through Jerry's, um, which is where I've gotten a lot of my brushes. I like um, Windsor Newton brushes and also silver bristleton bris bristlin not bristleton I think they may be an English brand silver bristlin but get it here so I'll have to let you know what I think of them imagine I will like them Okay, this has subtle, more subtle value shifts. So at this point, hello, Lynette, welcome. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm gonna play with some of this color a little bit more. Develop that shape. If you look at a tulip straight on, they seem like such a simple shape, but when they're laying down like this, you really see all the nooks and crannies. And what's actually there, I find that I get to know my subject in a whole different way, painting it. And it's, it's pretty fun. Here we lost some of that flower there. Put some of that back in. So I'm seeing quite a bit of uh, Naples yellow, or what I think Naples yellow. Oh, I know what I didn't do. Oh my goodness. These uh, oil sticks that I've spoken about and that I, I got last month. And they are so cool. They're R and F oil sticks. I took them all out ahead of time and everything. And then, well, you can use them at any point, but now's the time to do it. They uh, are different than oil pastels in that they will dry completely. They're basically oil paint in a stick. Oil pastels, which I never knew before until I got these, don't dry completely, and that's why you have to put them over glass, under glass. And, um, and they feel a lot more waxy. These are very creamy. And you can just use them as you may and whatever feels fun. I was a pastel artist, soft pastel artist when I first started. So I love the idea of just picking off a stick and just going for it, you know, putting in that color without, you know, having to mix anything. This one is not, I got it. There we go. Had some paper in the way. It's 
basically I'm just looking for the value and what color I think will add some fun to it. And I have a warm rose, which I think will be just perfect. This one. Um, I can't believe I almost forgot these. It's a new habit I'm of using a you know a stick. Um, so we'll see if we really can teach an old dog new tricks. Oh yeah, that is fun. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, and I have one that's gold. It's, what's it? It's called iridescent gold. So I thought this seemed like one that the gold might really work. So where you might ask, well, just wherever. Dang, I think just leaving it out the short time that I did, it kind of gave it a little bit of a film. I don't like that, so I'm going to put these away as soon as I'm finished. Hmm. Right along that edge there. Up here. Oh, I like that. Now the key is not to get too, too carried away, which I might, just might do if I don't stop soon. So I'm gonna do one more spot and then that's it. Okay, do we have any more? One more stick. This one right here, which is very close to my favorite color, St. Remy Blue. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find a place. Yes, boy, that they do get a film on them. So don't take them out of the container until you're ready to use them. So if you if you kind of wipe the edge off it, it's fine. Okay, enough of that fun. You come in these tubes, so I'm going to put it back in, even though it takes a minute. preserve them. Uh, I got, of course, the very largest size. I didn't even know they came smaller. These were at Jerry's Artorama, and they're pretty expensive. They were about 15 to 17 dollars each, but you can get them smaller, I learned, and especially online. But I haven't checked the price online, so... Maybe it's a deal where you get the bigger ones, you pay less, I don't know. Okay. So I had just gotten out my Naples yellow before I've thought about all that fun. And I'm going to take some 
warm white and some Naples yellow and put in some of this lighter color. Lighter value. This is a Windsor Newton brush and it's losing some of its edge, so really time to get some new brushes. Because if you can keep that edge, or if you have a nice edge on the brush, sometimes these strokes turn out so much better. or you can do it in one, one pass. I mean, I can get them right. Also put some radiant white out on my palette. I haven't used that in a long time. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that is bright. That's a gambling radiant color. Is also a gambling color. Okay. Wow, this one kind of went away altogether. some of that gold there. That's pretty cool. Pretty bit of that gold right there. I'm gonna try to leave that. That value needs to go a little bit darker. See how this is starting to give it form. I 
that yellow is a bit bright that I used for the um, stick. So I'll probably tone that down just a bit. I want to keep that so around it a little. I'm gonna to need to do another pass with the darks and kind of find some of these things again. confusing there so because that needs to be a little bit um, darkened and grayed a little so I'm going to use some of this uh, uh, Naples, uh, not Naples uh, transparent oxide orange Pushes that back, doesn't it? Put some more of that in here. And some. Tone this down just a little bit. So I'm going to look at it a little and I think some of these areas here need to be softened. A green, so that needs to be pushed back in space too. That is very blue looking. Bring this over here. There's a little bit of light peeking under here. Find out exactly where where I have put this right here. OK, 
Okay, well, coming up to nine o'clock, I think at this point, I'm going to let this sit a little bit and set up, and then I'll finish it off and post it this afternoon. Um, you know, there's just a lot more softening and some details to do. Uh, what I like to do to make things stand out more is like this ribbon here. I need to darken the value along here and along here so that comes forward a little. And same over here. It's not coming forward enough so I'll darken. Um, you know, between the tulips, I'll darken a little bit there. And then here. Yeah, there's quite a bit of that subtle value shift. Um, and so I'm not so subtle. I need to go darken in here again. But I'm pretty pleased with this start. Um, I can't find my little signing tool. I'm going to try to clean my studio up today, see if I can find it. But I have used uh, the back of a brush, and I could just do that right here. It's not as good as my signing tool. My fear is that I knocked it in the trash by accident and then it went out in the trash, but we'll see. And anyway, thank you so much for joining me for today. And um, the plan is that I will do this again next week, uh, nine o'clock on Wednesday. And I hope you have a wonderful creative day. Thank you so much. Bye for now.